In this video, we're going to learn about emission spectra. What's up guys? Welcome back to Siri Pesara Kimia Awa. In this part 2 of emission spectra, we're going to look at some example for calculations. Are you ready? Let's do it. So now let's have a look at how we're going to find the energy of a photon by using this formula over here. The formula is familiar to you, delta E equals to RH times 1 N initial square minus 1 over N final square, whereby the RH value is 2.18 exponent negative 18 joule. And we can also find the wavelength of that photon by using this formula, okay, when an electron falls from n equals to 6, so in the beginning, this electron is at the ground state, absorbs energy, goes up to n equals to 6, and it falls down to n equals to 4 in bracket series to release energy in a form of photon. So we're going to look at the energy first, okay? Remember, n initial is 6 and n final is 4 because we want to find out for a bracket series. So you're just going to be substituting the value inside. It's very simple. But what you've seen over here, this is the RH value. And then number 6 here is for the n initial and number 4 right there is for the end final okay it's very simple and then you work it out and finally you've got delta e equals to negative 7.57 exponent negative 20 joule the negative sign signifies the energy being released so you don't have to worry about the negative sign okay so when you have the negative sign in front of your delta E value that is simply trying to show that the energy has been released, okay? So next, we can use the um, information about delta E to find out your wavelength by using the formula in the blue box. So we're going to use both of this information to find out the wavelength of the photon. We've got the energy of the photon, delta E, just now. And then we're going to use the um, formula. We substitute the value. And remember, right now, this negative sign needs to be ignored because we're trying to find out wavelength. Length cannot be a negative value, okay? So you simply substitute all the value inside. H is your Planck's constant and then C is your speed of light, and then you've got your wavelength right there. We want to find out, okay? So you're going to work that out, and then you've got this values over here, and then finally, you will be able to obtain the wavelength of 2.63 exponent negative 6 meter, okay? So if your wavelength is in negative, means that is something wrong. You have to ignore, remember, I repeat, you have to ignore the negative sign on your delta E over here before you want to substitute this into your formula right there. Okay. So now we're going to look at how we're going to find out the wavelength and frequency of the second line in passion series. The example that you're about to look at right now is applicable for other series as well, for first line, second line, third, fourth, fifth, and so on, okay? So first, we're gonna start with um, knowing what is the end final for passion series, which is three. The end final for passion series is three. This is super duper important for you to know. Remember the mnemonic, Lehman, Balik, Pasang, Bracket, Fun. 
So, lemma number one, balik number two, pasang number three. So, leman is for Lyman, and then balik is for Balmer, and then pasang is for passion. So, that is the mnemonic that we have introduced to you in the first part of this series, okay, of this video series. Therefore, Lyman, the end final will be one, Balmer, the end final will be two, and Passion, the end final will be three. Okay, so when you look at this line spectrum over here, the first line of Passion series will be having n initial equals to four to fall to n final to of three. And then the second line in Passion series, you will have it when the electron moves from n initial five to n final three. Okay. So we're going to use this equation over here. So this is your Rydberg equation. So the equation is one over lambda. Okay, so if I'm going to point that here, one over lambda equals to RH. Okay, the RH here is different from the RH in delta E. You need to remember that the whole time. Okay, you need to remember that. So our h over here will have the value of 1.097 exponent 7 per meter. Okay, remember 1.097 exponent 7 per meter. And this one is for the wavelength. And you have 1 over n final square minus 1 over n initial square. Okay, so we're going to use this formula over here to find out the wavelength, right? So, remember the n initial just now is 5 and the n final just now is 3 in order for you to produce the second line in passion series. So we substitute the value inside the Rydberg equation. You get this, okay? And you work it out and you get um, the equation to look like this. And then you will get your wave number. So 1 over wavelength, 1 over wavelength over here is your wave number. So you have 778870 waves in 1 meter. Okay? So when you want to change that into wavelength, you're just going to simply um, move the wavelength to the other side and you will have 1 over 778870 and you get the wavelength equivalent to 1.28 exponent negative 6 meter. Okay, remember wavelength cannot be in negative value because this is a length and the length of the wave will be very very small okay so the number over here is a very small number okay so how are we going to find out frequency then so we're going to use the uh, information of the wavelength just now to find frequency we're going to use this formula over here uh, whereby c okay the c over there is the speed of light and then you have the frequency and the wavelength symbol okay so i'm going to point that out this is the um, speed of light equals to wavelength times frequency okay so to work that out you're just going to substitute the value of the wavelength that you have got from the calculation just now and then you will get your frequency equals to 2.34 exponent 14 per second So the last example we're going to be talking about in this video is on how to calculate the hydrogen ionization energy based on Lyman series, okay? So what happens over here is the electrons at the ground state, n equals to 1, absorbs enough energy and it jumps to n equals to infinity. And when the electron reaches to this point, 
it is no longer attracted to the nucleus and the electron can leave the atom of the hydrogen, leaving the hydrogen atom to be ionized. Okay. In order for us to do this, we can use the formula delta E and then your N initial is one and your N final is infinity. So that is the reason why it needs to be based on Lyman series because your N initial is one and then your N final is infinity. I know this one is a little bit different from what we were talking about in previous videos. When we were talking about Lyman series, N final is one. You have to remember before we reach to this point, okay, we were talking about photon energy. So when you want to produce photon, you need to have higher N going down to N equals to one for Lyman. But this time we're talking about absorption energy. So your N initial will be one, your N final will be infinity. And it needs to be measured in kilojoule per mole. So if remember all of these points over here, when you want to find out what is the ionization energy for um, hydrogen. Okay, so you can imagine graphically, um, the whole situation is gonna be happening like this. So that is your N initial, and that is your N equals to infinity. And we're going to use the formula delta E to find out the energy. So when you substitute the value inside, you will be able to work out the energy for one electron. But we need for one mole of electrons. Okay, so the value you've got over here, delta E, 2.18 exponent, negative 18 joule. This is the energy for one electron but what about one mole of electron okay so it's quite simple to work that out therefore if you have one mole of electrons you just need to times that number just now with Avogadro constant 6.02 exponent 23 so if you look over here this is the um, number you need to have times with the um, delta E value of which you have found out just now and you should be able to obtain um, the energy for one mole of electron which is 1.31 exponent 3 kilojoule per mole okay so that's how you're gonna work out the ionization energy of hydrogen based on Lyman series really hope that this video can help you to understand the basics of emission spectra. If you want to know more about it, do consult your Pajara Kimia. Before this video gonna end for part 2, again I would like to remind you to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you and goodbye.